So this is everything that we got to install it. I've got the antenna, which is just a 2.1 decibel. Uh, just there. We've got the XRS Connect 370. And I've got a genuine GME underbonnet bracket for the Ford Ranger. Now I've also grabbed some of this felt. Um, basically, it's not going to be permanently mounted there. I'm just going to put it there until I get a bull bar. So until I can move it to the bull bar, I'm just going to put some tape underneath it and make sure it doesn't scratch any paint while we're out and about. So it's inside the box. You get the speaker. You get the main unit that goes behind the dash. You get some extenders and a longer cable if it's a further run. Um, you get the power cable and the mounting bracket. So all of this comes in the box. You can actually get a kit that comes with the aerial as well. So um, I'll put that in the description. So you do have, have a few options. Um, I could mount it on my nudge bar, but I plan on getting rid of this pretty soon. So I'm going to mount it up here just off the edge of the bonnet because it'll make it easier when they change the ball bar over. Just um, thinking ahead. I could also uh, put it on the uh, GTX tray here, it's got a little channel, um, a nice little wide angle bracket would go well in there, um, but since I'll be moving it under the ball bar, once again I'm just going to mount it up front here, so we'll get into that and see see how I can get it on. So with the genuine GME bracket for the passenger side, I'm pretty sure this goes under this bolt and sits here, but I did get some felt because I'm not going to leave it there and I don't want to scratch the paint on my guard. So. I'll go and grab my socket set and we'll see if we can get it in there. I'll just undo this. The thing I noticed about the bracket is it does have a little slot here, so you don't actually have to take the bolt out all the way, just enough to be able to slide it underneath. should sit just about perfect for where I want my aerial. It'll just sit just out of the bonnet there. Um, it is actually made for the Ford Ranger, so it should be pretty perfect, but I will put the felt under it just to protect it that little bit more. So what I've done is just cut a little bit of felt and um, I'm just gonna stick it underneath here like that, um, just to sit on the paint and just do a little bit of paint protection. Just like that, sticks pretty well. Folds around that nicely. So add this little bit extra, just because it wasn't quite wide enough. Just like that. So now, hopefully, we'll just put that in there. And that'll clean it down nice without scratching any paintwork. It's not moving whatsoever. Pretty cool. So yeah, just that screw there, just underneath that. Put a little bit of felt on it just to protect it. Would you look at that? Clean as not a drama in the world. That clears that with plenty of room. I don't think I have to worry about scratching the, uh, the bonnet at all there. That's, that's pretty good. about time we mount this bad boy. So this pretty much just sits straight like that. It should look pretty cool. So you're gonna wanna just pass the tape through the bracket obviously. And then you've got a little washer and nut uh, uh, that'll just go on the bottom. Now the best thing about my socket set is it's a pass through, so I can actually feed the cable all the way through. I'll show you that, um, but it'll make that nice and tight, and you don't have to worry about that at all. So you can slide the socket all the way through, pull the cable all the way through. Just get it on there, just make sure that's done nice and tight, it's not going to go anywhere. It should come loose, it should just sit there. Next part is probably the hardest part, so we have to get the cable through the firewall into the engine bay. The easiest way that I've found to do that is probably with a coat hanger or I use a piece of silver solder from work. So you can just poke a little hole in it, 
take the cable on and pull it through. I'm gonna pop the glove box out and uh, we'll see if we can get it. I don't know if you can see just in and there, but that's the uh, firewall, that grey thing. So I'm gonna stick a piece of silver solder through there. Oh, I'm not sure. Come through just behind here. Wow, where all those other cables are coming through. So I'll go and find a piece of silver solder if I can get it through. This is literally the hardest part. So make sure you tape it on nice tight so it can't pull off. This is the part that if you're going to start swearing, this would be the part that makes you swear. Fingers crossed this works. So after pushing it through a little bit further, it's uh, sticking through right there. So, just got it just in there. I should be able to hopefully pull that through. And that's what happens when you don't tape it on good enough. It's actually a good idea to have someone to help you feed it through, so I'll do it again. So, even though the tape came off, I don't know if you can see in there, but you can just see the tape. I should be able to get it and pull it the rest of the way through. Thank God for that. There we go. That's the part we need. So make sure you don't pull on it too hard. You can damage the cable. Um, and we'll just get most of the length into here and then we'll zip tie the rest up out of the way. So that is probably the hardest part done. Got all the length through the firewall. Got it tucked in here. I'll probably just put a zip tie through that. Just hold it down. And it goes down through there. So now that you've got the cable through the firewall, you put the attachment on to connect it to the unit. So basically, it just goes in there, twists on like that. And now that's ready to plug into the back of the UHF. You also do in the, in the bag with the aerial, get a little cap if you want to take the actual um, aerial off the top so you can cap it up and protect it. And you get a nice little Allen key so you can take it off because it is held on by one Allen key uh, screw. So it does come with a 12 volt cable as well. So save time because there's a lot of fiddling around behind the dash. I'm actually going to run these back to the battery. Um, it is a fused cable so it is protected and best thing about having it permanently connected to the battery is even if I have the car off, I can have the radio on. Now obviously, yes, I could leave it on and run the battery flat, but as long as you're smart about it and you don't uh, leave it on too long, you should be fine. So I'm going to run this through now, be a pain and get it through the firewall again, but it should be okay. I should be able to just tape it onto this one and hopefully use that to pull back through a little bit. So what I've done is I've just taped this on to the antenna cable. Um, and hopefully I can use that to pull back through the firewall. And honestly, <laughs> tricks of the trade, easy as that. And now I can just hook this up to the battery and we've got power sorted too. Now I don't have any of the split tubing, but that's okay because it is split, so you can just slide it through afterwards. Um, this will be fine once I've secured it in place and uh, put on the battery terminals anyway. We've got some heat shrink here. Slide that on first. One of these crimps that I picked up from Super Cheap Order. Slide the cable in there. Might want to cut that a bit shorter. Um, and then on my pliers, I've just got a little crimping thing down the bottom there. On focus. There you go. 
bigger. So I can just put that on the top. And then you slide the uh, heat shrink back over the top and that'll hold it nice and firm and we won't have any issues. Let's do that again on the other side. my lighter and we'll uh we'll trim that down couldn't find the lighter i found this obviously be careful with naked flames around your car probably not the smartest idea but it's all i got get into a little flame like this and we'll just shrink down the heat shrink Pretty schmick. Just make sure you do both sides and you're good to go, no worries. You're on. Black to the negative, red to the positive. As you've seen, we've got the active on the active, negative on the negative, runs into the dash. Now pretty much all we have to do is plug it in and she should be good to go. So let's uh, plug the unit in and see if she's got some power. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Nice and easy to install. What I'm going to do now is just zip tie it up underneath the dash. Um, I don't want to see the unit itself, so I'm going to tuck it in nice and neat, put some zip ties around it, um, and run the controller somewhere nice. I'm going to use this GME extension cable just so I can get it up out of the dash and out of the way. Um, and hopefully, that should uh, get it to the spot that I want to put it. Down here, so we've got the unit just in there, all zip tied up. If you can see it too well, it's a bit hard to get the torch in there, but you can see the little GME logo there. Just got so that zip tied up under the dash with all the extra bits all just tied up and out of the way. So all that's left now is to mount the little bracket for this bad boy, and uh, should be good to go. So that's a wrap. I've got my little handheld here, just magnet straight on there. Still getting my push button. And yeah, there's a few pretty cool settings in here um, that I'll go through on a later date, but that's the install done. Nice and neat, everything tucked out of the way. No dramas. That only leaves me one thing left to do. I'm gonna put this somewhere 
and I'm thinking I'm gonna put it just up there.